Thank you, Pat, for your very nice words. And uh, Mr. Nahara, it's an honor to be sitting next to you. And uh, I read your uh, introduction here, and I realized that the year you you were taken to prison, uh, I wasn't born. Don't trust what you read. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an honor, really. Um, yeah, when I when I when I read this uh, this title and I, I I ask myself, democracy in crisis, we don't have it yet, we're still on the way. So we are not in crisis. So we're we have been always in crisis. Of course, uh, we have been watching your your uh, what is happening in this country. And shortly, just uh, uh, two weeks ago, when I was here, um, I, I, I had a short conversation with. Uh, 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 Pelosi, and it's a very short conversation, and, and I, I, I was only able to say one sentence. <laughs> I said, uh, would you please try your best not to let the conflict in between China and the U.S., I mean, armed conflict, happen? If that happened, all the effort we had made the last uh, quarter of a century will be gone, and that is not fun. So uh, democracy in crisis, you know, we uh, are, uh, when, when, when you have crisis, yes, and we feel it. And because this country is, 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 is the only, the, the, the biggest giant power on earth, and China is, is coming up. So if these two countries are clashed with each other, I know we are finished, at least for another few decades. But these are the big things. What about the, the, the micro level and then what we are doing? How can we, you know, uh, uh, if the planet, two planets are crushing each other and there's nothing we can do, so we, 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 we wouldn't kill ourselves today because uh, we have to live and we have to make our things better. So that every day, I just want to share with you one story. Um, it was uh, two months ago I had this, this conversation with... Uh, construction workers in China on my Radio Free Asia program. I've been doing that for 20 years. And this guy is 19 year old, and he didn't have a contract. He was hired to, to, to do some, this kind of work, that kind of work. It's not any specific, but one day, his manager asked him to, to cut, um, how do you call that, in the, uh, in the con uh, construction site, you have the, the metals is too long, you cut them. You have the kind of a chain, the cutter. He's never been trained. And a few minutes after, he cut his foot. And uh, right after that, he was sent to a hospital. And uh, the manager appeared for a few minutes and left about uh, 700 US dollars a month uh, in Chinese uh, currency and disappeared. And the company. I refused to talk to, to him about the compensation and uh, simply because there was no insurance, there was no uh, contract. They can simply deny he was working there. So that's uh, the reality. Somehow he got somebody post his story on internet, on the social media platform where I visit once every day. And uh, he left the phone number. I called him. I started describing to him about the law, what kind of compensation he deserved, uh, especially what the role the trade union should do to represent him. And uh, so he started walking into different government departments and walking into the trade union. And I called the local trade unions to different office and I asked them, hey, look, this guy had this problem and you should represent him to claim for compensation. But anyway, at the end of the day, uh, about uh, two weeks later, and he sent me on um, our social media communication tool saying that I got a compensation, and which was 20% higher than the legal standard. I couldn't understand. I said, you, how come you get that much? He said, I don't know. And it was not the company who came to me. It was the government, the local municipal government security people came in 
and talk to me saying that you talk to the oversee forces and you make the government look bad and you get to be careful but this is your deal <laughs> and that case um, tells us a lot on what is uh, what is going on in this country and and uh, why the government cares the local government I think people like this young worker all over the places and people are facing to survival situation. It's not about revolution. It's not about what you believe. It's about, what, it's about you cut your foot, or you deserve compensation, your family. How can you take care of your family the rest of the life? So that's basic survival. There's no other kind of glory of things but very basic. And in the same time, it's anger. And they are pushing around when they are in that situation. How can you believe people will just swallow? and forget it? No. And the anger fermenting every second, every push from this government bureau to the other. So that creates the pressure on the local government. And this kind of a pressure turned into fear to local government. So they don't know if one day someone puts some bomb or some kill somebody and they themselves will be responsible, at least they will lose their job. So that's a kind of a current situation. So the workers will can see the 19-year-old person, the next job he got, he will ask for contract insurance, and he knows these kind of a, how to get compensation. He will teach his colleagues. And why this thing didn't happen 10 years ago, 15 years ago? And why it's now? I would say now, China is in a different stage. Although the, 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 the European Union and the US wouldn't recognize China as a, as a market economy, but it is a market economy. And everything is about the prices and the cost, calculated very precisely. And to people, it's about daily life, it's survival. And political pressure created from there. And of course, you have South China Sea problem, you have the North Korean crazy guy, you have, you, 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 you have the conflict with the India. All these things make China current uh, politics become much more complicated than 10, 20 years ago. And in the same time, we have uh, internet, we have social media. And uh, I guess you guys uh, read a lot from Washington Post, or from New York Times, from, you, you, you hear from CNN how the Chinese government tried to control social media. I just like, uh, if you want to control social media, internet, just like you try to control oxygen on Earth. It's not possible, it's a new way of living. And they can only control certain amount. For example, keywords on the most sensitive ones. And why I can find this guy on social media is because he looked for compensation. They cannot make compensation, that word, as a sensitive word. If they do that, there you go. You shut down everything. And the, 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 I mean, 70% of the economy will shut down. They cannot afford it. So therefore, internet is a new way of living, new platform, and that brings people out from isolation. If you know someone 2,000 miles away have the same problem as you have, and you don't feel alone anymore, but which 10 years ago, you don't know other people have the same problem, so you are alone. So that's out of a Isolation, that is, when you are isolated, that's where the fear comes from. But when you feel someone else is the same and you don't have that as much fear as you have. And our strategy, now facing to the Chinese Communist Party's crisis, say they have political, economical, geographic security issues. And what we're going to do with that? Are we going to use that crisis to overturn the Communist Party's regime? Or we have other strategy. We take this opportunity 
to see how can we rebuild something instead of uh, turn down something. And the internet make the information flow fast and the people are out of the isolation. How are we going to do with that? Are we going to circulate ideas how to turn down the Communist Party? Or are we going to circulate ideas how to participate in your daily life matters, such as in workplaces, a bargain with your employers? And that kind of basic beginning democracy practice instead of aiming, everyone aiming changing the regime. But we have seen enough the last quarter of a century after regime change, the social justice never deliver. And that is to me another a way to look at democracy in crisis. And if democracy doesn't deliver in people's daily life, how can you wish democracy is not going to be in crisis. It will definitely be in crisis. So, in the last 20 more years, politicians, especially the new democracy, over-promise to people, but can't deliver. Because we skip, mostly we skip that important part, which is building participative, civil society, and people pay too much attention on regime change, but not the life next to them, how to participate in their workplaces, in the communi uh, community uh, 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 level. So therefore, our strategy, we don't have crisis. As I said earlier, we are always in crisis, and <laughs> we never get out of crisis. <laughs> so we, we don't feel the crisis, but we feel hope. When the dictatorship regime in crisis, and you know, we see hope. And so therefore, our strategy is we don't aim to turn the Communist Party down in China. Instead, we help it turn, make a turn. Turn to where the closest we can see is social democracy, with a strong trade union that bargains at every level. We will have that power to help this party to turn into social democracy. And we learned a lesson. We're not going to take that strategy to make another regime simply to replace this one. And then we repeat what happened in other new democracies. And we believe that democracy is a tool, it's a bridge, it's not the goal itself. And therefore, when, if we focus too much on making a dictatorship regime fall and to settle a, di a democracy regime, and then we fail ourselves. So therefore, again, I would say what the hope we can see in China, don't forget we have 1.4 billion population, <laughs> and that number matters. And if you're from one million to two million, it doesn't see, you don't see the differences. But if you're from 100 million to 1.4 billion, it does make differences. <laughs> so I would say uh, our strategy is continue to focus on workplace collective bargaining. And we want to take over the official trade union instead of uh, form another one. And strategically and economically, taking over the workers, taking over the official trade union through collective bargaining on every level, every sector, that will make maybe not the biggest number of membership union on earth, which is maybe 500 million, <laughs> and also the strongest that bargains. And remember the last 20 years, we were the main power driving the international labor standards lower and lower and lower. It's the labor, unprotected labor, no bargaining power labor running from countryside from China to the world manufacturer. We were the main force driving international labor standard down uh, and down. And the next 10 years, we don't need 10 years actually, we will through our bargaining power, we will redo the globalization. And we will make different sectors, starting maybe shoes and garments, 
and maybe computer, like uh, electronics, we will change the way that global companies that functions. So we will use these workplace democracy to make people understand that how you should understand clearly about different type of politicians. Doesn't matter they're taking the dictatorship power and machine guns in their hands or the promises of democracy. No matter who they are, and you know how to take them accountable. You know whether they're lying or not in their speeches, in their policies. So that's what uh, I want uh, to continue focus our, our, our strategy. Hopefully, we will have a, a new way of uh, achieving democracy uh, with the China model. Thank you. Just go right to Matt, not to waste time. And um, oh, sorry. go for it. That's okay.